Gary Payton II is back, and that means no seven-footer is safe. A lot of game to show it. Well, Anthony Towns, good deep position there. GP2 with a block! And when I say no seven-footer is safe, Right here is the two times MVP and statistically the best post player in the NBA. He has the ball in the post five feet from the basket. So Gary does what any normal six foot two guard does and blocks him before repping out some push-ups. But it's more than just making David vs Goliath blocks. Everything about GP2's game is tailor-made to help the Warriors, not just now, but more importantly, in the playoffs as well. Let's go back in time for a second. June 12th, 2022. If that sounds like a familiar date, yes, it was game five of the NBA Finals. And I just want you to sit back and watch this sequence from GP2. Tatum has the ball up top. Smart slips a screen to get to the middle of the floor. Gary recognizes that and covers Smart. But this is where it gets special because the moment Smart passes to Horford, GP2 realizes immediately that he needs to rotate out to Brown and then he does what he does best, which is pick his pocket. This was just one of six steals he recorded over the last two games of the NBA Finals, including four, yes, four steals on Jalen Brown in just two games. And my favorite being this freakish play where he rips the ball from Brown whilst he's spinning. But it's more than just a couple of good games against Boston. If you wanna hear something crazy, per 36 minutes, GP2 had the second highest plus minus on the Warriors team, only behind a familiar favorite, Otto Porter Jr. But that was just the playoffs. Let's go a step further. If you guys want to know why the Dubs have struggled defensively this season, well, the absence of Gary Payton is a major, major reason for that. Last year, the Warriors had the second ranked defense in the league. Right here, you can see that whenever one of Draymond Green or GP2 was on the floor, the Dubs had the best defense in the league. When they were both on the floor, well, they had one of the greatest defenses of all time. But in the 1800 minutes, neither of those two were on the floor. The Warriors defense would have ranked 12th last year. This season, we have seen a similar thing in the non-Draymond minutes, but instead of just being okay, the Dubs have been terrible with him, and a large part of that has been because they didn't have the young glove. But I don't even want to start by talking about his defense. One thing that often gets overlooked when talking about Gary is his offense. Despite having a skill set that wouldn't work for 99% of NBA guards, he is that 1%, and it's because he and the Warriors are a perfect fit. I mean, they call him the little big man for a reason. Well, they're going to defend them with a small perimeter gun. Oh, Gary Payton with the flush. It's not just his dunking ability, though. GP2 is a really smart cutter and a good finisher at the rim. Watch him on this play. Shea gets caught ball watching for just a bit, and GP2 floats into the space behind him before finishing at the rim. Or in this play in transition, where he leaks out and hits a moving hook shot. Obviously, there are only a couple of clips from this year, but if you want a better example, how about a casual Euro step in transition? Yes, he's got that in his bag as well. He's also a six foot two lob threat because why not? Now, one thing that often gets overlooked is his passing skills. Obviously, he doesn't run any offense for the dubs, but it's plays like this that are a product of his point guard background. Steph and Loon run a pick and roll. Ant does a good job at blocking the rolling Loon, so Steph kicks it to GP2, and in an instant, he throws a perfect on-the-money pass to Loon. Or similarly on this play, Paul kicks it to GP, who runs a DHO with Dante. Two defenders go to Dante, which forces Joe to commit, so Gary makes a nice no-look dime to Dre for the layup. Oh, and he's not going to make a ton of threes, but if you leave him wide open, he can make you pay. And there was no bigger example of that than in Game 5 against Denver, when Jeff Green decided to do the mannequin challenge and GP2 made him pay with a dagger. Gary is so perfect in this Warriors system because he effectively plays as a center, but doesn't need post touches and can make quick decisions as a passer. If you just ignore the fact he's six foot two, he's the Warriors backup center on offense because he can also rebound as well. But if you thought for just a second, the GP2 might not be the same defender he was last year following his injury. Firstly, shame on you. But secondly, just watch this clip. Sacramento's got a two on one. Davis. Good block by Peyton. And gave tap to a Warrior fan in the front row. How about that? Curry out there. At the other end, Peyton. 
That's quite literally the definition of a 3 and D player, but that was just one of three blocks he had against the Kings in a game where he was absolutely everywhere. I want you to watch him on these two plays. On this first play, Mechu gets his own rebound and puts the ball down to go back up, but Gary doesn't try to steal it from him as he's dribbling because of the risk that he could foul on a rip through. So he waits until Metu is on the way up before swiping it away from him in such a careful way. So two minutes later, when Terence Davis drives past DiVincenzo, Gary is attached to Metu, but he can't wait for him to bring the ball up. So just as Davis is gathering, he slaps down with cat-like reflexes, forcing a deflection and giving the Warriors the ball back. I know defense isn't as exciting as offense, but don't get it twisted. It takes serious skill to make those two distinct plays without fouling on either. And if you're impressed by this, one thing we learned last year is GP2 is even more of a defensive beast come playoff time. Because when I talk about switchability, I really mean it with GP2. He starts by full court pressing Derek White. He then rotates over to Tatum, but this is where it gets good. The minute White sets the screen, Gary is on him in a flash. White then runs a handoff to Brown, which you guessed it, Gary switches again before blocking Brown's shot. In just one possession, Gary went from guarding 6'4 Derek White to 6'9 Jason Tatum, back to White, and then finishing with 6'6 Jalen Brown. You know how everyone talks about team defense and the importance of that? Who cares about team defense when one player can guard an entire team for 20 seconds by himself? And when I mean he can switch positions one through five, here he is blocking Nikola Jokic on multiple different possessions in the playoffs. Oh, and why not one more example to show off his versatility? Here he is guarding one of the shiftiest players in the league. He starts by sagging off Jar a bit. Anderson then tries to set a screen to free up Jar on the backdoor cut. GP2 completely ignores that screen before nearly stealing the pass off a screen and then ripping the ball away from Jar as he is in mid-air. In case you haven't noticed it by now, Gary is a master at doing all of the little things but I'm going to highlight those little things because they do matter. Right here, he sets a hard screen out top for Steph. I mean, can we just appreciate a guard setting a screen that Steven Adams would be proud of? But he doesn't wait around. He rushes straight to the boards, which prevents Fallon Shunas from getting the board, allowing Looney to come in over the back before finding Steph for a three that he's obviously not going to miss. The fact the Warriors have such offensive talent, but also three of the best hustle players in the league without even mentioning Andrew Wiggins, is what makes this team as a whole such a special mix. But this group isn't complete without GP2, and it's good to see him back in the lineup. Anyways, with that being said, a like would be greatly appreciated. Subscribe to the channel for more. Have a great day. Bye.